I'm Barry Sandoval coming at you with another huge selection of vintage comics and original comic art. Let's get right to the photos and here's the best comic we have in the auction, Batman number one. This is the highest graded copy of one of the top books in the hobby, certified 9.2, and you really can't get more blue chip than that. Another fantastic highlight is the best run we've ever offered of Walt Disney's comics and stories. As you probably know, the first few issues are tough to find in decent grade, and this is uh, the second highest graded copy of number one and the highest graded copies of number two and number three. On to Silver Age, and here's one of the few Silver Age Marvel superhero books to have a 10 cent cover price. It's Fantastic Four number two, and this is the only copy certified 9.8 to date. Now, uh, let's get to Iron Man's first appearance in Tales of Suspense number 39, certified near mint 9.4. And of course, with Iron Man 3 fresh in everybody's minds, uh, the character has probably never been hotter. Now, as you probably know, Iron Man joined up with some other folks in a little group called the Avengers. Here's the first appearance of that group, and it's a pedigree copy, Northland pedigree, certified near mint 9.4 with white pages. Moving into the early 70s, this is the only 9.8 copy of the first appearance of Ghost Rider, which was Marvel Spotlight number 5. Now, in our comic art selection, uh, among many highlights, we've got some neat stuff from the turn of the century. And of course, I do mean the turn of last century. This is Windsor McKay, Little Nemo in Slumberland from 1906. Uh, this is an unrestored example, and it's also one of the oldest uh, Little Nemo pieces that uh, we've offered. And so now we can move ahead 30 years to get to a strip that's still 77 years old. It's Alex Raymond's Flash Gordon Sunday from December 1935. 1935 is a peak period year uh, in the opinion of most, and this is just the second Sunday from that year that we've offered to date. We also have a generous selection of Peanuts art. This is a Peanuts Sunday from 1953, Charles Schultz of course. Check out all of the characters in this one, and it includes some of those early characters such as Patty, not to be confused with the later Peppermint Patty, and also Violet, both of whom uh, you only saw in the first couple of years of the strip. In the, as far as comic book art is concerned, here's Wally Wood, Weird Science number 22 cover art, and that was the issue that had the unforgettable story, My World. As far as DC, here's one of our highlights there, Carmine Infantino, Flash number 117 cover. This piece of art has been in a personal collection uh, all of these years and it's being offered to the public for the first time. Another cool DC cover, Murphy Anderson, Justice League of America number 14. Uh, that's the issue when the Atom joined the JLA. Now here's an incredible piece. Partly incredible just because of the size. Uh, this is Frank Frazetta, The Night They Raided Minsky's, the painting for the movie poster. And uh, the image size here is 28 by 38, much, much bigger than uh, your typical Frazetta illustration. This was the art that was used for the one sheet, uh, the half sheet, and the window card, among others. And uh, the movie starred uh, Burt Lahr and uh, Britt Eklund, so you see them here along with a bevy of beauties in true Frazetta style. Now here's a, a piece from 1968, the same year as the Frazetta painting, but in a totally different vein. This is Robert Crumb, the complete five-page story, City of the Future from Zap Comics number zero. This art has quite a story behind it. It was all stolen from Crumb at one time and returned later. So be sure to check out the full lot description on the website. And here's another piece that has quite a story behind it. It's uh, Jack Kirby's uh, illustration uh, for Lord of Light. Now back in the 70s, producer Barry Geller commissioned Jack Kirby to create a set of concept drawings for an adaptation of Lord of Light by Roger Zelazny. Now, if all of this is ringing a bell with you, uh, you've probably seen the movie Argo, and you know that that project uh, was revived to use in the dramatic uh, Iran rescue, and uh, Kirby's art played a role in that as well. We're auctioning two uh, of those pieces, and the one you see here is the largest one that Kirby did for that project. So it's a great piece of art with an even better story behind it. By the way, the movie Argo was directed by Ben Affleck, who is my lookalike. Uh, now let's get to our cover lot, and this is Frank Miller, Batman The Dark Knight Returns, number two. 
It's the only cover from that four issue series to be rendered in pen and ink, completely by Frank Miller. This is also uh, a good size, good size piece, a little bit larger than your average uh, cover art. And what else can I say, but it's one of the best pieces, uh, most attractive pieces of comic art uh, that Heritage has auctioned to date. And moving into the 1990s, this is Todd McFarlane's original cover art for the very first issue of Wizard Magazine, which uh, if you're from a certain generation, that was your Bible of comics growing up. Uh, well, that's, uh, those are just a few highlights from our 1200 lot auction, so I had to leave a lot of great stuff out. So be sure to go to ha.com to check out every piece.